from Stuff Balloons from A to Z. If you know me, I have been in business for 30 years. Uh, my husband and I own a company called Balloon Masters in Buffalo, New York. And I actually started with the Super Stuffer 30 years ago, and that's how I started my business. We did stuffing only for about three years, and then we got into decorating. But I have done tens of thousands of stuffed balloons. So tonight, what I want to do is um, teach you a little bit about just a very quick design that we like to call the showstopper, okay? So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to inflate an 18 inch stuffing balloon, okay? This is the super stuffer machine. This is my favorite machine. And I'm gonna put the neck of the balloon on there, stretch it open, make sure it's in the middle, you know, so you might have to tug on that a little bit, but you're gonna make sure it's in the middle, okay? Now you can do this by hand. A lot of people have machines that you do this by hand. That's okay as well. This is easier for me because I have staff and I do a high volume amount of stuff balloons. So stretching them can hurt your hands after a while, just like tying balloons, right? So I'm just gonna push down and I'm gonna make sure that the neck is loose. Stick it in there and I've got a button over here. all the way to the sides to stretch out the balloon. This also helps you to realize if it has any um, pinholes, anything like that, this is where you'll see that. Uh, your machine should hold the balloon open if your um, seal is correct, okay? So I don't know what kind of machine you have, but if it's not holding the seal open, something's wrong, okay? Because obviously I need it open so I can stuff my items in there. So this is just a little protective coating, little tube that goes over there and this is for when I'm stuffing things in there to make sure that I don't rip the neck uh, nothing sharp is in there Super, you know obviously important depending on what you're wrapping so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put some crinkle cut shred in there so this is a little bit thicker almost like a cardstock that's cut and then crinkled okay so like this with crinkle cut shred I find I have to use quite a bit and it's maybe not my favorite. I, I like it because it comes in so many colors. It's really amazing for its colors. But what I don't like is if I'm doing a lot of these, it will um, change my hands to that color. And it gives me little tiny rips in my fingers. So when you're we're doing a lot of these, uh, keep that in mind, okay? If you're getting little like paper cuts, that's what it's from, you shred. And I'm spreading it out pretty good. So, what am I gonna put in this great balloon that's gonna be a showstopper? Well, how about some of that, okay? So this is hard cider from Angry Orchard, but you can do any type of beer that's in a six pack. You can do a four pack if you want. It just won't sit as well, and it's honestly not as impressive as a six pack. Now, when I say a showstopper, what I'm talking about is when you go to a fair, a festival, school event, the mall, maybe you're setting up for the supermarket, a nursery, wherever it is, you need something that's going to stop people. Like, you know, the parents will walk by and they'll go, oh, that's cute, but this is what's going to stop people because they're going to be stumped on how did you get this through this little hole, right? Honestly, a lot of people that do stuffing balloons don't know. <laughs> so you're gonna learn tonight. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take bottles out of our container. Try not to drink it. Then we're gonna fold up our container and we're gonna put it right back into the balloon. And we're gonna pop it out. And the great thing is, is that they really kind of come, you know, fold out really easily. Once you put the beer back in there, the bottom goes straight. And that's one reason why I want a really pretty good base of shred on the bottom, okay? We don't want the corners of that to pop your balloon. And then I'm gonna put the beer back in there, or hard cider in this case. Uh, one thing about cider though, or anything with liquor, is you honestly can't sell it unless you have a liquor license. 
So if you are at a function and somebody says, oh my God, I want that beer to take to the football game, I'm going to a party and that's gonna be my hostess gift, they have to bring the beer to you, okay? Don't sell, don't get even get into it. You're not gonna sell enough of it to warrant getting the license and it's just easy to do this way. But you can show it, okay? And then after your event, you can drink it. <laughs> You'll probably need it, right? So we've got our six pack in there and I'm going to add a few, actually before this, I am gonna add some black feathers. Now, I like to choose packaging based on the holiday. So this has a creepy tree on it, which I love. And there's ones that have pumpkins and harvest and leaves on them. They're beautiful, beautiful packaging now for the IPA beers and such. Uh, so I'm gonna put just a little extra pizzazz in there. And that's, for me, like one of my specialties is people expect a little something from me. And you might fill up, you might like cover your logo a little bit, but that's okay. And don't worry about that as much. People know what it is. So it's not like I'm, I'm teaching them a new product or, or whatever. And I can't sell it anyways, okay? So this has got nice big feathers, but the crow feather to me again is a little creepy and it's also a little more masculine than a lot of things that you could put in there. So this is also a great guy's gift, especially for birthdays, that type of thing. I'm going to take some five inch balloons and these actually just have some fuzz next to them, okay? This is just a five inch balloon and I'm gonna tuck it into the back. So I don't necessarily wanna put more in the front so it covers the logo, but if some of the feathers pop up, I think it, I think it adds to that tree look, the design that I'm choosing, okay? Again, this is just a five inch balloon. So you're gonna take a hand pump or an inflator and pump it up and tie it, okay? Um, it doesn't have to be sized, anything like that. I'm gonna put a couple here. Some people like to do a whole bunch, some people do some. That's my thing. I'm also trying to stage it. I wanna stage my product so that people can look at the front, but I don't wanna forget about the back so that it can be viewed all the way around and still looks nice. So if somebody put it on a table or maybe a kitchen counter, all the way around, your design looks nice. It has something to see, right? So it's got some little balloons in the back. The other thing I'm gonna to add to this, because it's Halloween, is I'm gonna add a little spider web. Not much, just something, like I said, to make it a little more creepy, Halloween-ish, okay? I do suggest not kind of actually using what I'm using. There's a, um, a netting, that, a webbing that's much, much better, and it's carried by Party City, and it looks like floss. It's all tied up, and it doesn't clump up like this. It's a little easier to work with but I'm gonna use this tonight. And I'm just gonna use a little bit. I'm gonna take some shipping tape. I'm gonna use my box, put it in there on the side. And I'm gonna kind of put my webbing all over the, at the uh, ciders here. And then I'm gonna pull one up, one little piece and I'm gonna tape it to the inside of the balloon so that it has a little movement, like your eye is moving up, okay? That's why I'm doing this. So a little movement. Make it a little more interesting. I'm gonna do one more piece. And really this tape, you will not be able to really see people ask me all the time about the tape well can you see it no nobody's looking at your design they're not they're not picking apart your design when they look at it they're just looking at the whole thing you want to cover your mechanics and you want it to look nice but you know don't overthink it i guess is what i'd like to say and again i'm going to tape that just there okay so it's got a little bit of creepy, creepiness to it. Super simple, it's gonna you know, stop people. So I'm going to take my um, protector, my sleeve protector off here. Now on this machine, I have like a, a little thing that you can start with your thumb. It makes it, it helps it to 
to come off of the machine easier. Another reason I love it. And to break the seal, I'm going to press down on it a little bit and open it up. Now, there is no way you are gonna get this out of the machine by leaving this balloon this inflated, okay? If I close this up right now, the minute I try to move it out of the machine, it's going to pop. So it's heavy and I need to have some give to it, okay? You gotta give it every opportunity to do that. So my machine is closed up. I happen to use a disc to close my balloons. A lot of people um, just tie them in knots. You could do that too. Now, what I'm gonna do to get this out of the machine is I'm not going to lift it from here. I'm going to slide my hand into the machine and actually pick up the six pack. So the six pack's gonna be sitting on my hand, okay? But first we're gonna make the stamp, okay? On this unit, because I want as much color as I can and I don't wanna spend a lot of time on the stand because I'm really putting it out there on its own to be a showstopper. So it's really about color. What I'm gonna use is a 350, okay? So a 350 means it's three inches thick and 50 inches long. If you use a 260, 260s are two inches thick and 60 inches long. That's what that means, okay? So this is just an inflated 350 all the way that I tie, okay? And you can put a little bubble, you can do little things. I don't spend a lot of time worrying about the stand, um, again, I'm doing this just for show and it's just, it's not worth it. Like, you know, for this particular thing, people aren't gonna be looking all the way around it. But if you don't know what a 350 is, it looks like this. This is my uh, Legenda. I have a lot of different inflators. And you inflate it all the way, leave yourself just a bit of a tip, okay? And you do this, it makes it soft. You're gonna burp it so that you have a little bit of a neck to tie it, and then you just tie the two ends together, okay? Now, this is going to, your balloon, your six pack, okay? So it, that's the same thing. So these are exactly the same thing, okay? So your six pack is gonna fit in here, but it's gonna sit directly on the table. It's not sitting on this stand at all because of the weight. It's just a decorative piece. So I'm going in, all the way, I am picking up my six pack, okay? So I literally can handle, like I literally, this is what I'm doing, okay? I'm putting it in the middle of my sand, and again, that's just going around there, okay? I do keep it a little bigger. I don't put it really, really snug because when I go to move it, I gotta get my hand in there again. People are gonna wanna touch it, blah, blah, blah. So I don't, I don't make the stand super snug. For this particular design, I do not tape the stand to the balloon at all, okay? Because it's already got a lot going on in there with the beer, okay? So you can see it's really kind of creepy. I've got the feathers and stuff, and it's just so cool. And again, people will walk by and go, oh my God, is that beer? Is that hard cider or whatever it is that you choose? I mean, realistically, you could even do pop if you want so that you can sell, right? You do glass bottles of root beer. Um, they have so like orange soda, that type of thing. I find that the beer, for some reason, I think because it draws men over is the, the biggest, people will think about it the most, over pop, okay? So we have a beautiful design here, but it's gonna need more than this, correct? And I'm gonna teach you a little top that you can put on any design, not just this, for Halloween, quick and easy. We do high volume amount of stuff balloons, so our designs are less elaborate, but very fun and just easy and quick to do. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do in here is I'm gonna put two clusters on the top. Okay. If you don't know what a cluster is, so I'm gonna make two of these. So a cluster, you can use either your hand pump or an air pump, doesn't matter. It does need to be sized. So if you're going to make a hand pump or, or use the sizers, one, two, three, for this, I'm gonna use three pumps, okay? But definitely size them because it, your design will sit better, okay? three pumps and you tie those two together. And then we're going to do two more. And a duplet, oopsie, I only did two on that. You want to make sure you do three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Okay, making a duplet, which is two in French. 
and that's going to make a quad once you twist them together, okay? Here, what I do is I tie these two quads together. I take a neck from one and a neck from the other, okay? So I'm doing two quads, and that's because I'm gonna stick something between the two quads, so I really need two in this design, okay? So I've got two, right? I am going to attach it here, so I am going to use half of a 260. I'm gonna make a knot on here, and then I'm gonna make a knot on there. Okay, I'm gonna wrap it around my clip. And then up over my bones, and that is going to attach my quad to my bones. To my big bone. So you knot it and then you twist it. I'm just bringing the necks up and wrapping them around. Okay? So it's easy. A little practice, but it's easy. Okay? And this is on there really tight. Okay? It's, it's not loosey goosey, it's on there really tight. So the next fun thing I'm going to do, and one of the biggest sellers that I use are curly cues. Mine don't have to look like corkscrews. I kind of like when they look a little crazy. I think it gives your designs a little more interest than them being so perfect, and that's just me. In this case, you definitely do want them to be a little crazy uh, because it's Halloween, right? And you don't want them to look perfect, but we're gonna add some eyeballs. So we have a, I have a quad here, right? One 260 and another 260. One 260 and another 260. So that's two duplets that I'm actually going to twist into a quad and put on here. But if you haven't done a uh, curled 260, I suggest stretching it. I always stretch the tip a little bit extra. I wrap it around two fingers. I bring it to my machine. And then I move my hand out as it's inflating, okay? So mine aren't perfect and I don't care. That's what I want. Uh, I guess I attach, God, I attach curlies to everything. I love them. They, I think they give the biggest bang for a buck, whether you're doing a bouquet, whether you're doing a stuffed balloon. Okay, see how this is going a little crazy? This is good, okay. So you think, oh my God, this is terrible, right? No. You take this, you take the balloon, and you wrap it around your arm. Okay, and you're gonna squeeze it. You're squeezing it into that shape. There, now is it a perfect curl? No, could I work at it? So it becomes almost perfect, yes, but I don't need it. So I'm not gonna worry about it. People are amazed that you can get this far with it, okay? So think of your customer. I know that we are very critical of ourselves, but your customer's not as critical of you. So the next thing I'm gonna use is the little five inch bloodshot eyeballs, okay? And I use a red Sharpie marker, and I just draw different things on them. I inflate them to different sizes, okay? And I'm going to put one of those, I'm gonna squeeze the tip down, so I have like a little nipple, okay? And then I'm going to tie my five inch balloon. So that could be one pump, two pumps, whatever, however big you wanna make it. I like to make them different sizes. Onto the end, and then I'm going to cut the neck once it's really tight. Just wanna make sure it's nice and clean in here, okay? So it's just a little fun thing. And I'm gonna do that to each one of these. Again, just tying it on there. And cutting the neck. And I've already drawn on them some bloodshot things. Some of you that are um, face painters, all that kind of stuff, that can really do things. Probably have a lot harder job than this. Now this guy didn't put any red on. I just left in black and white. And you can use the one-eyed black spider's um, eyes if you want, or bug eyes. You could use um, the button technique and make your own little eyeballs if you want.
paper. So, you might want to put more of them on there. There you go. Okay. So, now a cool thing that I found, um, well, that actually you've seen uh, online, are 3D stickers for your walls. And what I'm going to show you is bats. Okay, so they're like a little plastic. I just bought these from Amazon. And they come in a whole bunch of different sizes. I think you get 60 and there's three or four different sizes. And I'm going to add, I'm going to put stickies on the back. They actually come with a little sticky too. But since I know that my glue dots are going to, my you know, the pro glue dots are definitely going to stick to my design. I'm going to use these. And you can use more. I, I'm just going to use three personally because every time I add something like this it costs more money right so you want to keep your designs simple profitable and you don't want people going oh my god those are so expensive but I do suggest if you go to a fair or craft show or something you have one design that's very elaborate that's like a hundred dollars people like to buy things right in the middle. So if you only sell stuff that's $20 or $40, you never have the chance of selling something that's $100. So make sure you always have something that's 100 because you never know that your customer walking by might go, that's what I want, right? That's the golden goose customer that says, I don't care what it costs, that's what I want. So remember that. So if you have something that's 100 and something that's 50 and something that's 25, you're gonna sell 50 all day long. You'll sell a couple 25 and a couple 100 ones. So just remember whatever you want that middle price point to be, that's what you're gonna sell the most of. So at this point, because I've done a whole bunch of sticky stuff, I would clean this balloon. I don't wash my balloons prior, anything like that. You, well, there's two products. This is Balloon Shine. Balloon Shine, you would not put directly on the balloon. You would put it on a cloth. You spray it on the cloth, you rub your balloon down, makes it really nice and shiny. It won't oxidize, anything like that. You know, if the wind, if the air conditioning is blowing on it or anything. The other one is High Shine. This is a new product, uh, fairly new in the last two years from High Float. And this you spray directly onto the balloon. You'll, it'll have little droplets, but this takes about an hour before it, um, like the droplets will kind of move and connect to each other. And then suddenly your balloon is very, very clear. It's shiny and slick and has a great look to it. And the, what I re like about this is that you would shine this whole thing. So it looks really professional. Nothing that they've seen at Party City, right? We're not Party City people. They're not going to Party City to make this design or anything. And it makes yourself stand out. So this is my showstopper eyeball design. I hope you love it. I'm Marlene Potts from Stuffed Balloons from A to Z. You can see my videos online at my website or join my Facebook group. So thanks so much and good night.